Okay, so this is the first video of Econ 201. Disclaimer, who am I? I'm a first year student. Well, not anymore. I was a first year student who made this channel and like I thought the entire syllabus of Econ Accounting, most, almost all modules. And um, second year, we'll see if it happens the same, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously I'm a student, okay? I'm not a lecturer. I never ever claimed to be a lecturer. But, but I try my best to be one. Now, um, I don't imitate the lecturers or wanna, uh, you wanna be a lecturer, no, no, no. I'm a student that teach other students because we are students uh, as a skill spark community. So let's start now. I, mean, I don't like these PowerPoints, to be honest with you. I like to draw things. I like to visualize things. I like to show you what must get in your mind. So let me just put a board here because I just, it's too complicated as words and stuff, to be honest with you. So while I do that, now what are we learning over here, right? So introduction to macroeconomics. Now, if you did econ, well, you should have done econ one or two. We build on that, right? But in this course, what do we learn? So you know how in macroeconomics one or two, that's basically just MCQ. You look at the graph goes up, demand goes up, supply goes up, what drives demand up? Okay, but that's fine. In your macroeconomics, right, we learn about implications. So now we're looking at, okay, you're telling me when there's money in the economy, demand goes up. But why demand goes up? So this um, course will tell you why demand goes up. So it basically explains everything we did last year. So coming back now to this. So let's look at the first slide, right? Now when you first over here, they don't explain anything to you. But what is this? This is called a growth graph. A growth graph shows the growth of an economy. Now, when I say an economy, what does it mean? It means like a country. If I say the growth of South Africa, I mean South Africa, right? The growth, all the products it's manufacturing, all the money it's manufacturing, right? People and all businesses come together. Now, a lot of people do not know what's actually GDP. This whole thing over here talks about GDP. So we need to get that straight, what's GDP? GDP, what's GDP? GDP is a total value of goods and services produced in a country within a year. So, in South Africa, you have about a couple million businesses, eh? okay, not maybe a million, thousands. So, you have one spaza shop, you got shop, right, you got checkers. Now, imagine a million of those, a million. All the million shops produce sales, they produce products. They pay people salaries. They grow their economy up. The total value, if you have to put it in a number, in a number, it's GDP. So GDP tells you how everything, the total value that all the businesses are producing in the economy. So now that we got this off our heads, what GDP is, let's continue. So this graph shows GDP per capita. Now you might be thinking, what's GDP per capita? Right, let me show you an example of two scenarios. And I want you to think how it's different from GDP and GDP per capita. So right now I'm gonna explain GDP and next to GDP per capita. And I want you to know what's the difference, huh? Eh? Um, per capita. Per capita, I like to think it about per person. It makes sense, right? Eh? So this GDP is basically GDP. This is GDP per person. So it makes sense. If I tell you the GDP of this country is a million rand, that will be the GDP. If I tell you what the GDP per capita is, it'll be, if GDP is a million, it'll be a million divided by the population. So in South Africa, if you have 60 million people, right, and the GDP is 120 million, you'll say 120 million divided by 60 million, which will give you 2 million. That means each person, which represents 1 million, has 2 million rand worth of goods and services. This is better than this. Why? If I have a country, so let's say country. So country A, right? Then I have country B. And let's see. I'm going to prove something to you right now. Country B, right? Country A, let's say, has only two people, right? Two people. And in total, now in total, they produce... A million rand worth of goods. So, million rand worth of goods. Over here in country B, right? You got, what is this? One million. One, two, three, four, one. It's one million. Let's say over here you got a hundred million. I mean, quite a big number, right? But you got, let's say, 
a hundred million people right a hundred million people which country is better without looking at the population obviously you'll say country b because countries b is gdp only see this is gdp only this gdp only this is a hundred million this is a million so obviously this country b looks better but no in country A, there's only two people. So technically, out of the million, if you have to divide it by two, each person shares one million rand. Sorry, not one million, five hundred thousand divided by two. Five hundred thousand, um, like, worth of goods and services. So this one person over here, he's rich. This one person over here is rich. This is the whole population of the country, only two people. Both of them have a million rand. I mean, sorry, five hundred thousand rand. So you tell me. Is this country doing good? Of course, this country only two people and two people is getting 500,000 and that's good. But in country B, although the GDP is high 100 million, per capita turns it to only one rand. Literally, because there's 100 million in GDP and there's 100 million people. So 100 million in GDP divided by 100 million people is one rand. So each person gets one rand. So if each person here gets one rand in country B versus each person that gets 500,000 in, in in country two which one is better it'll always be country a so although country a has a small gdp it has a small population so people share more it's more it's a more high standard of living unless country b that has a low standard of living so now do you know why gdp is not a good indicator of standard of living gdp per capita is the best so now that we explain GDP and GDP per capita very good, these graphs represent GDP per capita. Always when you want to show growth, we use per capita because as I said, standard of living, that's how you show it the best way possible. As you can see, countries, they grow differently, right? One goes up, one goes down, one comes back. Just now we learned about convergence. Convergence is when a graph catches up with another graph. See how this small blue graph, it's slowly getting to this big graph convergence they converge they come together right converge they come together they come back right so all you need to take note in this video is gdp is the total value of goods and services produced in a year in a country gdp per capita is the total value of goods and services produced in a country divided by the whole population every time you use standard of living to describe a country use gdp per capita because that represents the true proportion of value that the standard of living of people have right and um, yeah, so why there are vast differences in growth between countries like US and Ghana? We're going to discuss now why, right, on all these after slides. But to make it summary, in these different countries, right, they might not have enough resources. One country like Ghana is a poor country. They don't have technology. If you look at countries like US, they have technology, they have skilled people, their GDP will be higher. In all businesses, GDP in the USA will be higher. Why GDP in USA might have AI businesses, right? In Ghana, there might be businesses like spaza shops, completely different. Why have some developing countries succeeded in catching up? So why has some countries um, caught up with some countries and why some countries are still bad? The countries that are caught up use a lot of technology, right? Technology is the best force to drive growth. Listen to me, technology is the best force. Nothing beats technology. Without technology, you will not grow in the long run. These questions can be answered in a growth theory and growth accounting theory. Okay, and we're going to be discussing this in the next video. So this video is very important to discuss GDP and GDP per capita and how it's different because you'll literally use this GDP per capita now in the rest of the slides.